inside. It was really fun. My childlike lambs who hang upon my every word. This is Shwanda, the great. And I have had a vision in the night. It is strange. It is of the future. The future, my small ones, is not like how we live now. There is a box. Well, there are billions of boxes. At least everyone has one box. And they come in all sizes. Some sit in their hands. Some are set on tables. The box does many things. People don't smile at each other. They send each other pictures of smiles through the box. And they don't go to the grocery store. No, the groceries just appear at the door because of the box. They don't even send birthday cards. They just talk to each other through the box. They sit and stare at the box for many hours. The box is everything. They laugh, they cry, they get angry. They're seated, hunched over the box. They poke at it. It does their work. Sadly, many people in the future are flabby because they don't move as much because they're sitting so much looking at the box. You know how you walk to your friend's house at the end of the day, you just tell them how you're doing. They just poke at the box. Boom, boom. No walk. But because everyone has a box, people can communicate who would never have connected before. Ideas get shared very quickly. Humanity unites behind causes for justice and freedom. There is good in the box. And there is one of them. Oh, she has curly hair. Oh, she's very cute. She will talk to them about the box. She will help them understand that it is strange. She is very brave. Oh, puppets, the messengers, they're calling me. I must go. Be well. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Seattle, where if you take one wrong step, you bump right into a geek. <laughs> okay, so I know you're all here today for the Techie Tour, where you get to see a real live Seattle tech company making cutting edge software right before your eyes. You are in for a treat today here at Big Bop Software. We have some of the smartest engineers and the hardest working salespeople in the universe. I should know, I recruited all of them. <laughs> My name's Brennan, I'm a recruiter, slash talent attracting tornado, <laughs> slash messiah of make them say yes. <laughs> and I am just so glad that you are all here today. All right, so I know Jonathan made sure each of you got a cup of coffee from our coffee robot. A little big bop mug that's purple and gold. <laughs> Isn't that fun? So any time during the tour you're hungry for some goldfish crackers or M&Ms or a shot of fireball whiskey, you just let me know. We've got all that here. Okay. We're going to start by heading over to finance slash HR. <laughs> we don't actually have HR. That's something that we hope to integrate as we grow. <laughs> For now, the finance team just did a great job making sure everybody has the benefits they need, and if there's anything you need to talk about, there's Bob. <laughs> Bob's our head of finance. We just put him through a how to listen course, and I think he's doing a great job. <laughs> First lesson on small companies, get ready to wear a lot of hats. <laughs> I mean, who needs to go to some big HR department that's trained to hear your feelings? Just go to Bob. <laughs> Heads up from those spreadsheets, Bob. All right, so for example, just last week, Bob and I sat down and we talked about the days off I will need and the medical benefits for my upcoming surgery on my lady parts. <laughs> I think we totally bonded. Hashtag Bob is my new BFF. <laughs> okay, so being a finance department at a small company is really special because here we are just a bunch of dreamers getting to a billion dollar valuation. And these poor souls need to make sure the numbers add up. <laughs> it is not easy, is it guys? <laughs> I mean, I'm over at my desk booking acrobatics teams for our next company party. <laughs> and they're over here getting ready to say, no, Brenna, no, no, no. <laughs> Just last week, 
I hired life-size Care Bears to come into the office. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got a rainbow frosted cookie. The bears danced, they sang, they even hugged us. I mean, people told me they loved it. But according to the budget bullies over here, not a good use of company funds. Oops. <laughs> Yesterday, we received yet another disturbing report of local tech recruiters luring engineers into unmarked vans and forcing them to sign W-9s and offers of employment before they will unlock the van doors. Yeah, so uh, yesterday I worked at Big Bop Software and, um, well, I, I guess I work here now. Um, what's this place called again? <laughs> a victim of the scheme was interviewed at his new job at Bigger Box Software. His desk is by a sunny window, has a quadcopter with his name engraved on it, and a full bar. The man weighed in on the issue today at a press conference, co-sponsored by concerned mothers of software engineers. <laughs> knows the competition for tech-savvy workers continues to escalate in our city. But I didn't think it would come to this, and we're doing everything we can to stop it. Unfortunately, our investigations show that police efforts to stop the practice have been less than forceful. When faced with friendly recruiters offering them whiskey, a gaming console, and every flavor of Dorito, many police officers pass hours of time in these vans when they could be protecting our streets. We'll continue to follow this story and give you updates as they come into our news desk. Hi everyone, it's me, Bridget. <laughs> But don't you already miss Brenna? <laughs> so putting this show together took me way back to 2004 when I got my start in tech. Um, I was a young, eager marketer. I was working for healthtalk.com and I prepared a monthly newsletter for each one of the chronic disease states that we covered. <laughs> Colitis, Crohn's, lung cancer, breast cancer. And so my job was to go out into the interwebs of the time and find stories, okay? This is very early content marketing. Really early because Google was pretty skinny back then, not a lot of search returns. No one was really blogging. There was no YouTube, there was no Facebook. So I kicked it back all the way to the 90s and I went to chat rooms. That's right. Not many people around in the 90s, apparently. <laughs> chat rooms were where people who had similar interests went to talk. All right. So and a lot of times I would show up these chat rooms. It's like last activity eight months ago. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll just find something. Early signs I was going to be a great marketer. <laughs> OK, so I would get in the chat room. And in one case, for example, I mean, I was really scraping. I was in a psoriasis chat room. <laughs> and this poor woman had written that her psoriasis made her feel like she was trapped in a car that was on fire. Oh, awful, right? Good sign to me a great marketer because I was thinking, I wonder how I could spin this into a newsletter lead. I mean, there's got to be a story there. <laughs> it's not awful, but it's true. My boss pulled me back. He's like, no, no, don't. You don't want to do that. <laughs> Just come up with some, something. So. Um, so at any rate, I really loved marketing. I had my first writing job, it was fun. And the other thing that was great about coming into tech for me was I had come from healthcare. In healthcare, I was a medical interpreter in Spanish. Hola. <laughs> so I would attend appointments with patients and walk through their whole experience with them. And it was a lot of waiting, okay? So you wait for your appointment, and you wait to go to the lab, you get to the lab, you wait for the results, you go back to the appointment. When I got to a startup, I loved the pace. It was so fun, right? There was so much to do. If you're waiting around at a small company, you do not understand what we are doing here. <laughs> Makes money, here you go. So just to demonstrate what it was like for me and what I found actually really fun, here's like an example of an early boss I had at a company where I was the 36th employee. 
Hey guys, marketing, good morning. Great to see both of you. <laughs> okay, so it's Monday, but I'm gonna be gone all week. I just found out I'm flying down to San Francisco tonight. We're gonna meet with some partners in the morning, nice and early. I'll be flying out to Dallas for a conference. There are some found, uh, potential funders that we're hoping we can connect with, get ready for the next round. So last night, I was up all night, literally, thinking about some messaging for you know the marketing team for the next quarter. But I'd love it is if you guys this week could just kind of come up with some stuff, start publishing, <laughs> testing, you know. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and draw this on the board, and let me see if the blue works. No, nope, blue never works. <laughs> Black either, my money is on pink. Oh, there it is, pink, yes, okay. Anyways, I'm gonna draw this up, and what I need for you guys to do is just get started, and if you have any questions, I'll be online around, I don't know, midnight, 12.30 every night. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was awesome, it was like unrestricted lands in which to create stuff. I was like, all right, cool. Um, so I enjoyed the pace, I thought it was really fun. And the other thing I realized I liked about working in tech was working with engineers. Usually that's funny. <laughs> I realized they're basically like the kind of turbo nerd dudes that I hung out with in high school. It's like the same. And, I just have to paint a picture for you, because this is 2004, so this is not the programmers of today. <laughs> Those who have chosen computer science because it is a lucrative career and it will allow them to keep up with all the fashions at Amber Crombie as they change. <laughs> programmers. No, no, no. 2004, these are people who chose to be engineers against all social odds. <laughs> I play D&D with my friends all night, Dungeons and Dragons, for those of you who don't know. <laughs> I'm going to the midnight showing of every Star Wars movie the moment it comes out. <laughs> and I'm going to devote my life to playing with computers, screw you and your social norms. <laughs> so like true hardcore developers back there was very fun. And um, the overall thing that I realized is that I just really loved Techlandia. <laughs> I think we'll give finance a break and head on over somewhere fun. <laughs> Sales! <laughs> I love it over here. Okay, so I know it was a little quiet over there. Not sure you can hear me now, because we are blowing it up on the phones. <laughs> yeah, Big Bob, that's right. Okay, so the way it works is, we are a B2B SaaS software company. <laughs> means we are business selling software to businesses. It's a very competitive space, okay? So let me explain it a little. Marketing gets out there with some great content, blog posts, webinar, video. They just lure people in like little fishies and they give us our their email addresses and their names and then we pass all that over to sales. Sales gets on the phone, follows up with some great information about our products. So, Mr. Quota King here, this is Toby. <laughs> Hi, Jobs. <laughs> so, Toby and I went to college together and he was in the craziest fraternity. I mean, he is so much fun at our company parties. <laughs> Hi, John, Toby. <laughs> We're totally dating. <laughs> no touching at work, no, no, honey. Do not call me beast mode in the office. <laughs> <laughs> talked about that. Okay, anyway, so, <laughs> as you can see, Toby has his headset and his laptop, and he can go anywhere in the office to do his work and distract those who are trying to concentrate. <laughs> but go sales. Okay, so speaking of people who are trying to concentrate, here's marketing. So marketing is often next to sales, very heads down group over here, just the cutest little bunch of creatives. <laughs> so in the back we have Kelly, she's our blogger, funny, funny stuff. I mean, I don't even know if half of what she writes relates to the company, but boy, people are just clicking away. <laughs> this is Devin, he's our web developer, I call him Devin the Dev. <laughs> he is just amazing, he can make anything just like pop up or poof away on the website at any time. And he's really a geek. He spends his free time studying how to make chain mail, because he's like into ancient warfare. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Dad. <laughs> Anyways, you know, one thing that always bothers me is people, I think, think that the marketing team isn't very bright, because a lot of them are communications majors. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I think you guys are working real hard. <laughs> 
Gosh, I just love my job because I get to laugh so much. <laughs> so going back to 2004 again when I joined Techlandia, one thing I had to get used to was perks. Being in healthcare, I would get excited if one of the nurses gave me a juice box. <laughs> it was cold. <laughs> got one free thing today, yes. After a few years in tech, you start to say things like, um, can we get the juice not from concentrate because it would be fresher. <laughs> beverages are sort of a thing of lore at tech companies, right? Microsoft back in the 90s had their beverage centers where you could have unlimited chocolate milk. <laughs> I was in high school like, I'm going to definitely work there. <laughs> so the last company I worked at, the, the key is basically you got to have a lot of coffee, right? Just as a base thing. And last company, all the companies, you got to, so you, and you can't just have it prepared one way. No, because there's lots of people with different needs. So you got to have your Nespresso, your Keurig, probably the French press. Somebody used to be barista is going to grind some fresh beans into a pour over in like 20 minutes. And then just like a coffee machine, which is fine. And you can't just have coffee. So you need to have some milk, right? But you can't just have one kind. So you got to have non-fat, 1%, 2%, whole, half and half. Some people can't do dairy, better get some soy. <laughs> some people can't do soy or dairy, so you're going to have some almond milk. <laughs> and don't forget the people who need lactose-free. Whoa, big fridges. <laughs> and then for those people who really want to enjoy their day, there's Coffee Mate. <laughs> awesome, right? This stuff is the best. So if you want to have coffee, mate, you might be in a different mood one day, so you've got to have hazelnut, say, if you're having hazelnut day. Then you have to have some other options like snickerdoodle or peppermint. So you at least have five kinds of coffee, mate. So this is like normal, okay, at a tech office, bonanza beverages. But I feel like there's a particular perk that I would consider unsung from the tech world, and that is the opportunity to select your own job title. <laughs> hey, I, got it. Cool. <laughs> I remember that company I mentioned where I started as number 36, they said, hey, we are so excited you're here. We've never had your position before, so if you could just give us a basic pay range and a job title, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> they did not have HR. <laughs> I think also it's just with the uh, advent of LinkedIn, so it's like your picture, your name, and your job title, people are kind of going for it with the job titles. <laughs> so, here's what I have noticed. I think what you have to have if you're going to put a job title together is number one, it needs to be impressive. Sure. Number two, a little confusing. <laughs> people are kind of like, huh, I'm impressed and I'm not really sure what's going on. <laughs> Maybe I'll email that person. <laughs> Uh, the best part of this sort of phenomenon, I feel like at tech companies, is the summer intern who is a manager. <laughs> They're not managing people, they don't manage a project, they just have one small task in the middle of something large like reporting on a project. But they are a technical reporting manager. Wow. <laughs> you did a lot better in college than I did. <laughs> The other thing I love is when it's the person who finally finished college and like started yesterday, and they have a title like Innovation Outreach Lead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that person books appointments for the sales team. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a pattern to the job title thing, in my opinion. If you really want to go for it and ensure that you're going to rock the effort here, you can just go adjective, title, <laughs> of or for, thing, no, adjective, thing. So for example, chief manager of product ideation. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to dial the, turn the dial up on that, chief manager of product ideation. Ideation, creation, and innovation. It's like you can see the ideas just flying. Hit me with that. So I thought of some more typical job titles and how we can maybe add a little spice. Store manager. I'm impressed. I am not confused. How about 
lead ambassador for optimized sales efforts. <laughs> <laughs> they like represent the US on the UN board and also run a store. <laughs> Nurse, best healer of interrupted ailments. Interesting, interesting. I think some senior engineer needs to be the Supreme Commander of Code Manipulation <laughs> for the dark side. <laughs> Waiting for this, just one day on LinkedIn, do it for me. <laughs> so in order to have even more fun with coming up with job, job titles, I have created a game. It is called Job Title Bingo. It has really nothing to do with bingo, other than you get to pick something out and read it, which is very bingo, I feel like. So the way it works is one very lucky audience member, lucky, 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 gets to come down here on stage and be the picker outer of the job title, okay? So you can't fail with my system. <laughs> you will shine. And then once we pick out that job title, that lucky audience member gets to take a stab at what that person does for a living, okay? <laughs> and if you're really struggling, you just phone a friend in the audience and someone will help you. <laughs> House lights are coming up. <laughs> Look at this gorgeous audience. I saw a hand. I thought I saw a hand. Somebody itched their face. Don't itch your face right now. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Dang it. Okay, I'm going to go with Dane. That's actually the next one. I have another game. Don't worry. Okay. Everyone, you have a tech preneur right here on the EFC. Yeah. It's my buddy Damon. He is real deal. So he's going to really. <coughs> Be good at this. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm counting on you. Okay, so just you can do the no look pick. You can just look and pick whatever. So you're gonna pick one out, hand it to me one at a time, and I'm gonna read it to the audience. So, so. Yeah, you're so good at this already. Yes, that's perfect. <laughs> Advanced, great start. Job title. <laughs> He's mixing. This is very good. Okay. Advanced manager. <laughs> we'll soon find out of what. <laughs> of partner. Okay. Ooh. Direction. Okay. <laughs> Advanced. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? I do this all night. I'm serious. <laughs> Advanced manager, partner, direction. Please let us know what this person does every day, Damon. I, uh, I think exactly what it is is they go around and uh, from a very high level, they you know, direct people okay. and how to talk to partners. Okay, let's come around. Okay. <laughs> so eloquent. Please continue. Yeah. I, we need to do at least three of these. Three. And the third one is for the audience. And Damon, you get to pick whoever does the third one. I just hope just I don't so you know. draw my own title. <laughs> <laughs> Would it start with Supreme Minister? <laughs> <laughs> Ministers and Messiahs, they are out there. Okay, Supreme Minister for Information. Management, okay. okay. Supreme, <laughs> Supreme Minister for Information Management. If I had a robe. Okay, okay, okay. I, I imagine this person is the person with the robe yeah. that sits in front of the console yes. with the lights off. Okay. Managing. Okay. The information. Yes. Nailed <laughs> <laughs> it. All right, let's give me an applause. All right. Feel free to put any of these on your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> okay, go ahead, please. Yeah. I like this game. Isn't it fun? <laughs> it's instant funny. Okay, lead. Solid beginning. We like it. <laughs> director. Okay, pumped up director. Okay. That one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nicely done. It's a minister. Don't bruise yourself playing this game. Okay, lead director. Yes, the minister of event. It's also the most I've moved in the past week. So. <laughs> okay, lead director of event innovation. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you the opportunity. You 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 have to pick someone in the audience and ask them what they think this is. Lead director of event innovation. Who looks like a good? I, I think you have an excited. Oh, oh. How about the gentleman with the mariner shirt. Oh, did you raise your hand, Lyle? No. <laughs> you have to pick someone to raise their hand. It's usually a little nicer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, is, is this the person that books the table at the uh, CSA? 
Uh, CES? CES. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. There you go. Yes. So, do you want to tell me what CES is? It's the uh, it's a big show with electronics and stuff. Yes. <laughs> so CES. This man is obviously in the scene. The lead director of event innovation. Yes. Books and tables. <laughs> Damon, put her there. Really enjoyed having you. of luring in, inebriating, and stealing tech talent has only increased in recent days and took a terrible turn earlier today when two companies recruiting teams went at it, gangs of New York style. <laughs> engineer Kelly Kettering was walking to lunch alone when two vans approached her, opening their doors simultaneously. <laughs> According to eyewitnesses on the scene, Kettering quickly ran in the other direction, shouting, leave me alone, I like my job. <laughs> so flowed between the disappointed recruiters, each group blaming the other for the lost opportunity. Slapping, kicking, hair pulling soon followed within seconds. <laughs> No reports of weapons on the scene, though a lot of swag in the form of stuffed animals and random jump jars did become. Speaking from his hospital bed, Bigger Bob Soffer recruiter Jeff Slickly explains what got him into the fight. They said the only people we could get on our team are UW summer interns. I'm not going to take that. No one talks to us like that. The mayor's office continued the incident that it will be forming a task force to address this disturbing trend. The mayor made no official statement, but was overheard mumbling, sometimes I wish we still just made really cool airplanes. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you any updates as they come in. Gosh, guys, let's give marketing and sales a break. Plus, it's so loud over here. Let's go somewhere quiet. Engineering! <laughs> Can you hear that? <coughs> That's the sound of great software being made, everyone. OK, so over here, we have a great cast of characters. There's Leonard sitting on his ball in his <laughs> snuggy, barefoot, just coating away. <laughs> Snuggie helps him focus and the ball is great for his back. <laughs> so you'll notice a lot of the engineers are barefoot. Maybe a few of them seem like they could use a shower. <laughs> but you know, we just want them comfortable and productive, right? <laughs> Look at this image of Chewbacca. They made out of M&Ms. <laughs> How much fun. I love it. <laughs> Hi, Georgine. Hey, that's Georgine. So she joined us and I was so excited. She did her undergrad at Harvey Mudd, did graduate work at MIT. She is so smart, and she just loves riding around the office on her tricycle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe we can talk to one of the engineers. This is Rodney. He's one of our back-end engineers, which means that he works on the fundamentals of the software. This is stuff that you can't see, but it is very important. Unfortunately, Rodney's always making jokes about how he's great on the back end. <laughs> and we don't have HR to stop him. <laughs> so, looks like Rodney is headphones, heads down. That's what we say when somebody's just really focused and working, but hold on a second. Okay, he slacked me. <laughs> so, Slack is a messaging system that engineers love. They can have multiple conversations going on and multiple topics. You know, it seems like they're so quiet over here, but they really talk all day like a bunch of 13-year-old Taylor Swift fans. <laughs> all right. So let's see what Rodney, OK, he is spanking some code. He is spanking it, spanking it, spanking it. OK, that code has, <laughs> code has nowhere to go, if you know what I mean. Thank you, Rodney. <laughs> So you'll notice he's just working so fast. You know, I'm just going to teach a little bit more, but engineers are supposed to document their work. You know, just leave a few notes, a trail of crumbs for the next person who comes along and has to make sense out of their wacky thinking they put into some crucial aspect of the product. <laughs> 
sometimes their work is an indecipherable mess. <laughs> wow, that sounded really negative. I'm going to put a dollar in my negative Nelly jar. <laughs> I'm always trying to improve myself, and the money in that jar goes to regular facials. <laughs> okay, so why don't we see if we can talk to Jenna. Jenna and Brenna. <laughs> we could not be more different. <laughs> Jenna has full sleeves of tattoos, and I have a microderm of raised forehead. <laughs> so... <laughs> Jenna rocks my world because she codes like freaking King Kong. I mean, she is the best. And you'll notice she has a full bar at her desk, which is an amazing recruiting tool. <laughs> she can make you any drink in the universe any time of the day. What would you like? Just kidding, it's 10 a.m. <laughs> but Jenna's pretty much sauced every day at 3 p.m. <laughs> Oh gosh, let's go over here. It's a little early for Jenna. <laughs> so, I don't know if you noticed, but Jenna has a taser at her desk. <laughs> you know, a lot of people put Jenna in anger management classes. <laughs> we just gave her a taser for her birthday. Crazy, right? <laughs> okay, so as I said, I'm a marketeer, as we call ourselves, and um, you know, marketers have this hip suave sort of reputation where it's like, oh, they're like on Twitter all day and they get to play on fun podcasts and do videos and go to events, right? So like, yay, I'm being marketers. Then there's the dark side, where people used to call us marketing slime, I understand, when <laughs> Microsoft was young. But, but it's like, you know, we're, we are in charge of sort of luring people in, making things shiny. For example, I am a content marketer, right? So I write things for the internet and there's something called a clickbait article, right? You have fallen into this trap. <laughs> Madge and I wrote, 10 things everyone should know, but they don't. <laughs> Maybe you should click on that. <laughs> now that's not the only kind of marketing out there. There's lots of things people are doing, emails, the design, but there's one thing that I know is extra disturbing to all of us in our digital era, and that is the person who is in charge of making sure when you look at a pair of shoes on Zappos, they then follow you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, I'm in a totally different experience. But those shoes are so cool. <laughs> Haunting you, yes? Well, the thing is, marketers in the digital world that we are in today are looking to create activity, as they always have been, but in general, for digital, it is measured in clicks, right? So we want you to do a thing. We want you to download or follow or retweet or buy. Hey, how about that? Um, <laughs> and even though you're tapping maybe sometimes in your device, we measure this as clicks. So, in honor of my brothers and sisters in marketing, and because of my fascination with those folks who do the ads that follow you everywhere around the internet, I have written a song called Just Click. <laughs> and it's really from the perspective of the person I imagine just like in a dark room, the big hoodie just forcing ads at you. I just want your C L I C K. <laughs> I just want your C L I C K. Click. If you enter webs, you will find so many ads, it blows your mind. Well, no, it's me serving them up. Those ads that make you buy that stuff. You don't know me, but you do, cause I'm always playing tricks on you. Tasty emails you will open, I'm so jacked, I must be dope, and just click. Cause I need you to just click, you know you need those shoes. I work so hard to follow you here, so just buy some stuff while I sip a beer, just click. <laughs> 
I'm gonna hit you with some calls to action. You'll catch the door. We <laughs> have marketers in the audience. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> I'm gonna hit you with some calls to action. You'll catch the lure. While I'm relaxing the abs, I'm looking. Serving up looks so good. That pug pug video works like it should. <laughs> I could feel bad, but I don't. I could feel annoying, but I won't. I'm reaching my goals, and I'm winning. I'm bringing in business, and I'm grinning. Just click. Come on, do me right. Just click. It's the middle of the night. Your defenses are way, way down. There's no one else around to just click. This next part is a shout out to all my brothers and sisters in B2B marketing who have to get email addresses. <laughs> my grandma watches all of our webinars. <laughs> Don't think I haven't thought of it. <laughs> she has 500 email addresses so far. <laughs> Sales team calls her, but she's never home. But I've met my goals and I bought us two tickets to Rome. <laughs> so click, it's a digital era. Don't let all my attention scare you. I won't call you on the phone and I don't do billboards by the road. And please don't read the details because yes, I'm going to send you more emails. Because <laughs> now I've got you where I want you. In my database where I can haunt you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.